Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to determine whether a form is currently open, otherwise known as loaded, in Microsoft Access. We will use this to determine if a form is open so we can update a value on it and avoid getting an error message. Today's question comes from Jeremy in Bethesda, Maryland, one of my gold members. Jeremy says, I've got two forms in my database, one for a technician and the other for the jobs that's assigned to him. On the technician form, I like to keep a count of how many jobs they have assigned. If I try to update this count from the job form and the technician form is closed, I get an error message. Is there any way to check to see if the technician form is open before I try to update that value? Yes, this is certainly possible. There's a million different ways to handle this. So let me translate this into something that everyone else will understand. Let's do this with customers and contacts. Since that's what I use in my tech help database and everyone who's been watching my videos should be able to understand the analogy. But this will work the same for any two forms. All right, before we get started, this is a developer level video. So we are gonna be using some VBA. If you haven't watched my intro to VBA video yet, go watch this now. This will teach you everything you need to know to get started in about 20 minutes. And optionally, go watch my create a function video because I'm going to show you how to use a global function so you can use this anywhere in the database. These are free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them and come on back. Okay, here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want to. And in here, I've got customers and I've got contacts, which each time you talk to a customer, they get a contact. I also have orders, right? Every customer can have multiple orders. Now, let's do this with customers and orders. Let's say on the customer form, you want to have an order count. So you know how many orders they have. You could do the same thing with the total of their orders and sum it up or whatever you want. I'll just, I'm keeping it simple for class. So let's put a calculated value down here. Okay. Let's put in here, we'll call this the count of the orders. How many orders do they have? All right, and we'll make the name count orders or count order. I like to keep things singular. And we'll use a D count function in the control source. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it better. All right, this would be NZ D count all the records from the order table where the customer ID equals the current customer ID and give me a zero if it's null. And if you don't know how to use dcount or nz, I've got videos to teach you those too. I'll put links down below in the links section. I usually assume by the time you're to de the developer level, you've used these functions before. So if not, I got videos on them, go watch that. All right, I'll hit okay. And let's get rid of that currency format. So it's just a number, save it, and let's close this and reopen it. Okay, so this customer's got two orders, right? If I go to the next one, one order. There's no real reason to save that value. I mean, you don't have to save it in the table because you can calculate it on the fly. Yes, there are exceptions, but generally you don't need to save that in the table. All right, but you can quickly and easily see, you know, I've got two orders. If you were using like the, the, the sum of their order total, this might give you a, a good example of what the customer's worth. In any case, when we're on the order form, let me move this over here, okay? If I add a new record to this one or delete an existing record, then I want this value to refresh because users will get confused. If you change stuff over here and this doesn't update right away, they'll get confused, right? If I come in here and I add a new record, all right, let's add a new order, just some garbage, right? I'll add another one, okay? Notice this still says two. Now I can come over here and manually refresh this by hitting F5 and now it's updated to four, but I want this to refresh whenever this updates whenever you have a new one or you delete it. Now, the best way to do that is you can put an event in this form. I recommend on current. Now on current runs when you move from record to record and when the form opens, but it also runs if you add a record or if you delete a record and it just kind of, it encompasses all of those different events and you only got to put it in one spot. Yeah, there's a little extra recalculation when you're just moving through the records, but that doesn't happen much, especially with a single form. So in here, Okay, I'm gonna put forms customer f dot refresh. That tells that form, hey, refresh any calculations that you've got going on there. All right, save it, close it. I'm gonna close the order form and then reopen it again. Okay, now if I go to a new record, type in some stuff, okay, 
As soon as this record moves to a, you move to another record, this updates to five. See that? Okay, it doesn't happen while you're editing. Okay, but as soon as you're done and you move off that record, now it updates to six. All right, that's a lot better than what we had before. And yeah, you could throw other events in here too, blah, blah, blah. But this is just general, this, you know, giving you a, an example of what we're doing here. All right, and likewise, if you come back here and delete one of these guys, because we got to delete the details first, then the order. As soon as you delete it, watch that, it updates to five. Okay, see that, that one event covers everything. All right, we're good. Now, here's the problem you run into. All right, this is what Jeremy's going through. If the user closes the customer form and I try to go to another record, bam, there's your runtime error 2450. The database can't find the referenced form because you're trying to refresh a form that's not open. Okay, hit debug and it takes you right to that line. Now, there are two ways you can deal with this problem. There's the cheesy way, which works, and there's the, there's the better proper way. The cheesy way is to use some error handling and just get around that. You can come right in front of this guy and say on error, remove or resume next. Remove, on error, resume next. That says if any line from this point on generates an error, just ignore it. All right, save it, come back out here, and now I can move around with reckless abandon and there's no big deal. It just ignores that line, all right? And anyone who tells you not to use on error, resume next, don't listen to them, it's not bad. I use it all the time, but only for very simple things. Only in little form subs like this, where you've got like one or two lines of code that you are expecting to generate an error message, okay? If you've got a big long block of code here, try to avoid that because it'll cause errors and you won't even realize you're getting an error message and stuff just doesn't work, right? My code doesn't work and I have no idea why. And then my code works and I have no idea why, okay? <laughs> And if you want to learn more about this, I have an error handling video. I'll put a link to that down below as well. It talks about this and some other different cases. Okay, but this is the cheesy method. We're going to try not to do this. So what would be better? All right, let's say, for example, this is in a big block of code. You don't want to, you don't want to do that. So the, the better method, the proper method, is to check to see if that form is open. And we can do that by looking at the forms is loaded property, but it's not just that easy. It, it's a little bit more involved than that. All right, we can come in here and we can say if current project dot all forms, what's the form name? Customer F dot is loaded, then do that. Okay, that's how you check to see if a form is loaded. Why the nice guys at Microsoft didn't just make it, you know, forms customer F dot is loaded? I don't know, but you got to go through this. It's hard to remember, but... This does the same thing, right? If I go through here now, look, it checks to see if that form's loaded and it's not generating the error. If the form is open, right, it'll still work for us. And if we come down here and we add another record, our code still should run. And we're back up to six. Okay, good. So that's the better way, but I'm, I never remember this. I always end up having to look it up. So what I do is I take this and I make this a function, okay? And in fact, I put this function in my code vault and I've opened this page up. This is now free for everybody. You can come in here and get this code. It's right here. Here's a global function you can use because now all you got to remember is is loaded, right? You put this in a global module and you can use it anywhere in your database. You don't got to remember this whole current project dot all form stuff. So just copy that. I'll put a link to this page down below. Look for the is form loaded code link in the links section. This will take you to the code vault which normally you gotta be a gold member for, but I opened up this page for everybody, just as, as, like a, as a little teaser for you. All right, so copy this to the clipboard, come back to your database. If you have a global module like I do here, you can create, you just drop it in here. If not, create a new one, right? Create module, not class module, module, right? But I'll put it in my global mod, all right? And I'll just paste it right here, boom. Public function is loaded. Now is loaded form name will return that value. You don't got to remember about all that. You can just come in here now, close that. And instead of all of this, you could say if is loaded customer F, then do that. And I don't know why that lowercase to fix that. There we go. All right. And in fact, you could just do a one line solution like that. There. What are you doing to my capitalization? There. All right. Save it. Yes. Give it a quick debug compile. And now we can move through like this. Well, that's the wrong form. We can move through like this. It sees that it's open. If I delete a record, 
Should go down to five. Yep, and everything works fine. If I close this guy and delete another one, it should avoid any error messages. Perfect. And there you go. The is loaded function. So I hope that answers your question, Jeremy, and I hope for the rest of you that helps you out. You learned something and you see what kind of goodies are in my code vault. Lots of, lots of goodies in there. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. 
plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.